navigate through the history of cinematography. Blockbuster Inc. Coming soon. Welcome back to Insider Gaming, everyone. Mike Strauss, senior editor here with the team from Blockbuster Inc., Super Sly Fox. It's a big interview, a full house here. I'm joined by Costas, Alkis, and Panos. Guys, thank you so much. And I know what's a busy time when we're recording this just before the launch of the game. Uh, take, thank you again for, for joining me here. Uh, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure uh, you know, to talk about the game. Finally, uh, it's been quite a few years for us, and uh, yeah, we're uh, you know, on the finishing line, so it's very exciting for everybody. So, Blockbuster Inc. is a game that, when when people look at it, immediately it takes them back to the movies uh, from 2005. That is a game that may not have been super popular at the time. Over the years, became such a cult classic, such a such a memor uh, a memorable game for people. When, was Blockbuster Inc. any did any did you take any sort of inspiration from games like the movies when developing Blockbuster Inc. or even just coming up with the idea for it? Uh, definitely. I mean, the game is definitely inspired and paying some sort of homage to this uh, you know old time classic. Pretty much, you know, it's a niche, and uh, we're exploring it right now with uh, with our own twist. Um, so yeah. I mean, a lot of people will be uh, comparing the two. And, you know, a lot of times people will also say we're the spiritual successors of the, uh, of the movies. And we couldn't be happier to be, you know, you, you know to hear that. So it's it's fantastic. And right. we, we would love to deliver something that kind of like uh, scratches that itch that people have uh, from not being able to play this game anymore. It's not available. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much... Uh, what uh, leads us to strive to to produce the best game possible uh, for the people and the fans. So, Blockbuster Inc., uh, we're recording this a little bit before launch. It's If you're watching this, the game has launched officially. So, you know, because we don't have time machines, I can't just jump to it. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Is this successful? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say it was. I'm, I'm just going to say it was, and, and we'll get into why I think it is. Uh, right. And I, well, I think it will be in a second, and I'll get your thoughts. But this is a game managing your own studio, and you have so many details in the game. There are so many. It's one of the deepest, like, ty I guess you can call it a tycoon game, if you want, uh, that I've seen come up in quite some time. What Was that always a goal, to make it a, a game that was more than just what people thought was on the top because on the top people see a movie studio sim and they're like okay you make your movies you put in the information it creates kind of like there's all those games there's like game dev tycoon youtuber type right. all those games out that, that are out now but they're, they're not that deep people will look at this and think the same thing off the surface until they get into it and playing it what how important was it to make sure there was much more than that top layer of you just build a movie uh, I mean, this is kind of like an effort uh, and a project that, that's been going back for like six years, especially for me. Um, it started as a side project, so you can imagine like we had no clue uh, as a team that we would reach this point where, it, it, you know, the expansion we had like from the development standpoint and how deep pretty much it, it got. Uh, it kind of like evolved through time. Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously as a, as a small team of three people, uh, we always strive for the best and we have to like, uh, you know, at work pretty much every other studio that makes similar stuff uh, that has more people and more manpower. Um, so we, we would even love to add even more uh, depth to the game. So yeah, definitely. You can say this was the goal and it still is. And, you know, post release, it's going to get even deeper. So, uh, you know, we're excited for people to, to try it out and, you know, also kind of like give us feedback and see where we get. So Blockbuster Inc. I mean, you, you start up, you create, you name your own studio, you build it up from this big plot of land. And right off the bat, you notice it, when, when you're, when players are jumping in, there's, you kind of just touched on it, but just, there's so much to do. Right. And there's so much to potentially get lost in. 
some games nowadays don't have any sort of tutorials. They just throw you into the fire, especially games that want to be sim. How important was it to make sure there was a detailed tutorial system? Because there there were times where even after, what, by the time we're recording this, I think I'm about 40 hours into playing. It is, I've had to go back because there's right. just so much where it's like, oh, I don't even, it's been so long since I even did this, I don't remember. But, <laughs> or there's things that are popping up for, for the first time again in, in your play. How important was it to have such a detailed and deep tutorial system for for new players. I think I think it's extremely uh, extremely important, uh, especially the way we structured our tutorial system. Uh, it's not the classic mission oriented uh, yeah. way of doing things uh, because our focus is mostly on the sandbox kind of uh, experience for people, right? So we don't want to really interrupt people uh, while they're you know building their studio from from the ground up. Um, so we we have like these chapters what we call them for the tutorials and everybody can kind of like hop back to any chapter they, they have questions about. Uh, it's kind of like an in-game encyclopedia, but like an interactive one. That's the way we consider it. Um, so extremely important. I mean, I know for sure that a lot of people will feel uh, a lot of familiarity with uh, what's going on in the game, uh, especially simulation fans and management fans. Uh, but at the same time, you got to assume people, uh, you know, will we'll need help uh, and, and, and adjusting to the game and the new features that we're adding. Because even if you play the movies, we're adding a lot of new stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to kind of help people uh, explore through all these options and, uh, you know, figure out like the, the tips and tricks and everything for the game. I mean, you, you talked about all this new stuff. Some of the new things that when, when I realized what I had to manage... Uh, is you know managing your your staff's employees housing which you know i i don't like the fact i i barely manage my own housing now i gotta manage you know their housing and they're whining because right. they're not living in a four star it's like be lucky you have a roof your last movie bombed you're lucky i'm not putting you in a one star <laughs> like, <laughs> right. but all these different things how did it go about deciding adding these features because you you manage your your employees housing for your stars and stuff you manage making sure they're well taken care of a full schedule like when people leave what they can be doing can they go home can is this a lunch break is like there are all these different intricacies before we even start talking about making the movie but right. deciding on what features maybe were necessary versus nice to have that you managed to get in versus maybe they're gonna mess up the game too much or, or take away what we're wanting how did that process go into coming up with these features that you guys wanted? Uh, I mean, yeah, it sounds it sounds kind of like uh, difficult if, if we present it like that. But also keep in mind that a lot of these things help with automation uh, within the game. So, for example, mm -hmm. the schedule is an automatic process that guides the people and employees in the studio and 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 to their tasks. Yeah, uh, it's also one of these things that we want to expand upon uh, after the release, where you can have like individual schedules for for groups and uh, you know specific teams that you're going to be creating uh and when it comes to the city map that's what we call it uh when you go outside the studio and you can manage you know the rent and all these things it's also one of the things that we want to build upon uh we want to make this 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 city kind of like a, a a live environment uh where you can see like the you know hop on the the award ceremonies and have it change and, and you know like all, all these things through the decades which is important for us to kind of like uh, replicate the feelings of each decade and and have people you know really draw them into every era uh, so they can experience like the, the cinematography and, and everything uh, pretty much the Hollywood experience through our lens uh, so yeah I mean you know especially with Costas we we talk a lot about balancing and and, and the design of the game and how we can help people yeah, uh, use all these tools that we're giving them as a system-based game but at the same time make their lives a bit easier uh, so you don't have to really micromanage everything. And that's, yeah, that's what guided our, our decision. And that's why we listen to the community and see uh, what they wish and what they would change. And yeah, we're really active there. Exactly. Like community feedback was very important and still is. So we are like, yeah, we, they tell us what they like and what they don't. And they, we listen, we manage, we delegate things and we do what we have to do, I guess. Um, when it when it comes to the community feedback, I, I know especially with with indie studios and, and and smaller studios, every time I talk, there's to to a different team. There's always like a different process 
of dealing with that community feedback because sometimes it can get so much it can get so overwhelming and then you get lost right. on what's a good idea versus what okay that's kind of that's not what we get it but that's not what we're going for versus that's just ridiculous for lack of a better right. term how is it juggling and that like juggling all this feedback and everything you get in like what what i guess maybe is the process like do you compare it to what you already have planned or how does that work it's, it's kind of like both, but we, we always pay attention to patterns. So if we see specific feedback, a type of feedback uh, that always reoccurs, like within the community, then we know that it's something that makes sense for us to at least investigate. Uh, of course, we heard like some, uh, as you said, ridiculous. We wouldn't call it that, but, you know, it's it, uh, we would call it like fun, uh, <laughs> funny, hilarious uh, feedback for the game. It's, it's, it's amazing to see how creative people can get through the community, uh, but as I said before, keep in mind with just three core people and we can't really, we got to adjust everything to a tight schedule. Yeah. And we also got to pay attention to uh, add value to the game every time we add something new from the community. So I guess that's it. First of all, it's, it's a pattern. So if it's a pattern, then we're going to definitely investigate it. And then it's, it's just about efficiency. And if we can manage to pull it in the game without disrupting any other mechanics. We, I, I, can't continue without talking about obviously the state of the industry as a whole is right. i mean there's never i have this view of there's never been a better time for the games people are getting but there's never been a worse time to be a part of the industry um <laughs> like it yeah. extends to development it extends to marketing even on my side on the media side it's that it's kind it's just a, a really like i guess depressing time in a lot of ways to see though the work you guys have put in and you are realizing the fact that you're actually getting this game out the door because there's there's so many studios that have these ideas and these games that are in development for years and then so, they just don't see the final release because of something or another right what, obviously I, it kind of goes without saying what it means to you but if you could put into words maybe like your thoughts on just being able to get to this point get the game out the door to fans and players and just throughout everything especially it's not like you haven't been working on this game i mean when you guys started then all of a sudden we hit a global pandemic so right <laughs> yeah like just that whole the whole process of this whole time of seeing everything happen in the industry and manage to get your game out it's uh, uh I, I think everybody can comment but i'm gonna start uh for me it's a surreal feeling you know it's it's just uh it, it shows our our resilience and, and passion about this project um you know no doubt we we just love working on this game and uh also i, I want to add that we're lucky to have like such publishers uh because yeah. you know they, they're supporting us you know like uh, uh not only financially but throughout everything we're on the same page uh, on what we want to deliver and i guess we we do consider ourselves very lucky on, th on that matter i mean we all hear stories about publishing developers but uh, yeah props to them uh props to, to the team uh we're we have a very good relationship between us. I think uh, through the tough times, we hold each other up. And uh, yeah, it's just teamwork, passion, and, and resilience in the end. Uh, and I see a lot of uh, indie teams uh, that are struggling, but it's just, you, you gotta stay focused, man. You gotta push through these this, this tough times because you know, it, it's, it's kind of like a loop, you know? Like good times will come back and, and then there's gonna be hard times again. And yeah. that's just gonna keep going, going, going. So, you know, if you love game development, uh, you're going to make it. I think that's the uh, that's what I want to add. Um, and maybe Alkis and Costas can comment on, on how they view this whole thing. I mean, it's exactly what Panos said, right? You need passion. You need a good team. We have we are lucky that we have good publishers and we communicate very good. It takes a lot. It's, it's very challenging. I'm not going to lie, of course, it's very challenging. But if you love what you do, you go to the end. Yeah, same thing. Uh, we both, all of us, started with a uh, that's the idea of making a game that we like. And what made it happen is that we kept ourselves together. We both, all of us, wanted to make a good result out of it. We kept having good ideas, things to add. And if we, as long as we have the time and the ability, we will keep adding stuff because we want to get the best out of it. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what's, what drives it the most. Yeah, 
and we're we're having fun right so it, yeah. it's not just work for us i think that's important when you wake up and and, and you know it doesn't feel like work uh, yeah. no matter how many hours we're going to crunch and you know that's what keeps the passion alive you know even post release adding like all these new stuff that we have concepts and ideas it's this is not the end for us uh you know so uh that what keeps us active it's it's also the community so i think once you get the community in they they also feed you you know like you feed off each other their energies and uh, and you know you can keeps the the engine ignited and everything yeah, as well perfect. yeah exactly with the game going back let's go back to happier talk uh, yeah. <laughs> with with the game one of the things specifically when building your your shows and movies you create your sets you have all these different options to to create your sets to put them around the studio and one of the things that caught me off guard, and I wasn't expecting when I first load up, is you film your movie and you do your animations, but then you actually have a full editor where you can watch it. What integrating that feature into this game was that one of those from the start? You're like, well, no, if we're going to do a show and movie, a, a game about a studio, we have to be able to watch what we're producing. It can't just be, well, here's the name of the movie, here are the actors, this is what it's about, here's the rating from it. So you don't get really any of that visual feedback, right. I guess. So was this from the start a plan of we need a full video editor? I like as deep as a video editor in a game could get, I guess. But we need a video editor to be able to watch the movies we're producing. Uh not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. No, no, no. So, yeah, when I first designed the game, uh, it was way closer as a concept to. Uh, can I name drop other games as inspirations? I guess I can. Yeah. Uh, it, it was kind of like a blend of game dev tycoon with prison architect, if it makes any sense. A hundred percent. Two great games. Yeah. So <laughs> it was also like 2D back then, right? So it was never a 3D game originally. Uh, but as I said, like as we started posting stuff and and you know seeing what the community told us, everybody was like expecting for like this new the movies kind of like spiritual successor, and without like this video editor and the visual feedback from the movies uh, that you make. Uh, People were just like, okay, so uh, you know, what are you guys doing? Like, how, how are you gonna, you know, experience like Hollywood as we or, or film good as we call it in the game? How how can we experience it fully? And then we just realized, okay, we got to do it. You know, like uh, we definitely have to add something like this. And again, I'm just gonna keep saying that uh, post release, it's gonna get even better, uh, even more content, even more animations to pick from. Uh, so yeah, it it was never the plan originally, but there's a lot of stuff we added because of the people. How did you guys go about adding, obviously, there's all the types of movie genres and themes and stuff, but was there anything that when you were developing on what you wanted, like this needs to be in there versus what you may have left out for future updates and, and themes or anything like that? What, what was that process like of deciding what what to give players when it comes to creating their, their shows and movies? Uh, I, th I think we just trying to capture like the majority of stuff uh mm -hmm. obviously each one of us have seen like shows and movies that we like and you know pop culture uh you know elements which we intend to to add even more in the future but originally you know there were like specific genres and, and themes that we had to add just as a base for the game for example like come on like vampires like you can't really uh do like a you know 1920s uh run without like like vampires you know <laughs> so yeah it's just like the basic elements uh trying to, to get all like all the mainstream attention to like this stuff and then yeah. uh post release we will just keep on you know i think eventually we might even have polls on, on on what people would love to see and we can make something uh you know close to the real stuff but you know mostly as a reference yeah was there anything when you guys were building the game and and testing and, and everything and, and even getting player feedback or whatnot that you ultimately decided against like it just didn't work like something didn't click uh, we have not abandoned costs. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but we we have never abandoned like a feature that we intended to to add. But some of the features are not fully fleshed out yet completely, uh, and we we will also not abandon them. But we we do have to like prioritize. Yeah. And you know, like there's there's stuff like for the meta game, uh, you know, after the '60s or the '70s in game where uh, kind of like stocks and shares come into play. And, you know, like these things had to take like lesser priority over like, for example, the video editor that you said, because uh, we saw that people really want a video editor. So 
yeah, we never cut like content from the game, but we do have to like keep improving like a lot of aspects of the game. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how we roll. So you have the game out in in, in full release finally. When when you see just everything you guys have done as a team to to get to this point, what is the first thing that that goes through your mind knowing like it's here, it's out now, it's just supporting it, and a- obviously adding more. But the the biggest chunk of getting the game out it is here. I don't even know, man. Like it's just like a mix of emotions. To be honest, you know, it's feel it feels like surreal. You know, like even even talking about it, it's just being so long that um, I think we are all very excited and terrified at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we even yeah. had like a prologue out. It's not even like our first fresh release. You know, there was a demo out, and we saw like the you know the feedback from the people. I mean, we got like ninety five percent positive reactions. So um, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just ecstatic. I think that's the only the world that describes my feelings. Maybe uh, the guys can comment on what they feel like, but yeah, ecstatic and terrified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a mixture. <laughs> like, I'm worried and excited. I'm happy. <laughs> every, every day I'm telling Thanos 10 days, 9 days, 8 days, 7 days. Uh, down, man. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's so surreal, but it's exciting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Mostly, you know. It's normal to be a little bit stressed on what you expect oh, God, to see, yeah. but we've, I think we, at this point, we can be optimistic enough about it. Yeah, I, and just one last thing to add to this question is that uh, we're not that stressed in a negative way because we know that we're going to keep being super active on the community and, and yeah. the development of release. So for us, it's, you know, it's just work as usual. Uh, we just hope people yeah. understand that there's definitely going to be a roadmap in the future. There's definitely going to be more features than Conan added. So there's, in a sense, nothing to be worried about. I mean, sure, some people might not enjoy what we created, but, you know, that's all part of the game. So as we start to wind this down, one of the things with with Blockbuster Inc. is the, it supports Steam Workshop, which means you will see players. Uh, they're, they're, players, when workshops available, do some weird things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> some fun, some really weird. But how yeah. important was it to allow that that flexibility and that freedom from players within it, so they're not just, I guess, constrained to what the game offers, and they can really let their imagination run wild. Extremely important. I think this is uh, it's game like this one that need to have a workshop. Uh, you know, like full on creativity. And as I said, there, even the simplest example, there is a lot of shows and movies that. You know we can't really replicate uh, for copyright reasons, but that's where the community comes into play and they create like the very own unique stuff. Uh, we will expand upon this uh, as well, but for now, you know they can share their sets and uh, you know if somebody wants to get in the game and not have to build their own sets because they want to focus on the management side only, uh, that's fine. You know we got you. Uh, so as I said, extremely important. Uh, involve the people as much as possible. This is the way we operate as a team uh, in all aspects. Uh, you know, concepts, ideas, feedback, uh, workshop, anything. And we will try to, like, even include even more options for the release, you know? So this comes, I have to ask, what are, I, I, you've mentioned that you have plans for the game post-release and to keep working. What, do you have any, uh, or are you able to say what those plans are or any, or give any hints to what those plans could be? Um, I said, like, for example, one of the things that we want to add, like a minor thing, is like the schedules, uh, even more schedules, even more content. Uh, we cannot really say anything specific right now because the first month after release, it's really important for us to gather all the feedback from a massive player base uh, that's going to play the game, hopefully. Uh, and we're going to direct pretty much our roadmap through that. Uh, so we can't really say because we can't promise something that's not going to happen uh, for the roadmap. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned. You will see a roadmap very soon. <laughs> Guys, I can't thank you enough for taking the time and joining me here. Blockbuster Inc., if you're watching this, is available now on Steam. You can get all the information at blockbusterinkgame.com. Thank you to the three of you for, for joining me here. I know as it winds up when we when I do these things, I have a habit of doing these things right around launch time for a game studio, and it's always <laughs> I'm always like, Maybe they get really annoyed that they're being asked to do it. We launch in like two days. What the hell are you doing? Like, <laughs> but I, I truly appreciate it. All right, Michael. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, anytime. We love talking about our game. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.